This is Bob Spitz with Management Success. I'm on with my friend Steve Eck from Eck Automotive. Say hi, Steve. Hey, how you doing, Bob? <laughs> I'm good. good. Steve, Steve came up with a brilliant idea to start a series of podcasts to uh, help uh, all the uh, folks in the MS community on different uh, topics. And as we know, uh, one of the things that all shop owners from my surveys, almost all, I'll never say all because that's a, a generalization and I'll always find someone who will object as soon as I say all. They'll go, well, that's not me. I say, okay, so almost all. Uh, very much like to hear from successful shop owners, not just MS, on what works and what doesn't work, how they've brilliantly applied uh, different aspects of what MS teaches. So we're putting together this series, and this is the first of them. And uh, this first one, Steve and I talked about this, and he actually started it with a podcast uh, a week or two ago, having to do with employees. So the first series is going to have to do with employees. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to limit these things so we don't ramble all over the place. We're going to have an uh, agenda, uh, and we've broken down this concept of employees into many, many, many individual podcasts. And uh, the first place we're going to start is with the concepts of recruiting and hiring. You know, how do you first get a good team put together, and where does that all start? And Steve and I, in our discussions, decided, well, we think it really does start with owner attitude. What do you think, Steve? Oh, it, it, it all starts with owner attitude. Um, you know, a lot of shop owners are looking for techs or body shops looking for body men. You know, they want to get a guy in the door today. And, you know, yeah, you do. But if you really want to build a team and build a shop and you're in it for the long haul, it's going to come down to your attitude. You know, build, it all starts from the top. That's right. You know, um, the folks who are going to be listening to this podcast are MS people because it will be broadcasted on the on the uh, Facebook, and we have folks on our Facebook who have just started the MS program, some who have been with us for many, many years, all different levels of experience. <clears throat> so I believe this is going to be extremely beneficial uh, for, for everyone. In fact, we'll probably be inviting some additional people to have maybe a three-way communication or even a four-way <laughs> on some of these podcasts. But what Steve just said is absolutely right. It all starts with tone and your attitude towards your business, the industry, and what have you. Uh, one of, Steve and I were talking about this. You're going to have a devil of a time recruiting a high-toned, positive outlook individual into a culture of antagonism, disagreement, problems, <laughs> unhappy. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, right. there's there's this no good employee that says, "Man, I can't wait to work in chaos and a mess." <laughs> <laughs> they, they just don't say that. That's I right. could um, I could walk into just about any business. It doesn't have to be automotive repair, and just uh, observe the employees and how they interact with each other, how they interact with their clientele, how they do their job, and I can tell you without meeting the manager what kind of manager he is or what kind of owner. Oh, it does I, completely start agree. I completely agree with that. Needless to say, in the 14 years I was on the road for management success, because what we're talking about doesn't just apply to an automotive shop. It applies to any service-oriented business. And I could tell when I walked into a hotel to deliver an MS seminar if management in that, on that property was any good or not, just by the way I was greeted by the front desk people. Their head was either in the game or it wasn't. They were either interested or they weren't. And, you know, we've talked about this. Someone answering the phone or someone greeting a customer at the counter, if they are bored or disinterested in the customer, is a kiss of death. Well, that starts right at the top. So an owner, in order to help, I believe, and I know this to be true, actually, for an owner to really have his head in the game, He's got to have a, a very high, high interest in his own business and the fact that this business is going somewhere. 
In other words, having a goal for the business, something that I could communicate to a prospective employee that would motivate them, that would, that would inspire them to come to work for me. But if I'm really unhappy with my shop, if I'm not making any money, and my real hidden goal is to get rid of it, trying to recruit into that scene is almost impossible. Well, yeah, trying to recruit anybody uh, who's high tone. You can probably find miserable people. <laughs> to join the <laughs> misery. <laughs> you can find miserable people to come and work for you, but I don't, I don't think you want to go that route. That's right, and they won't be there that long anyway, because what's the purpose? <laughs> no, you, you, you said something interesting, um, and I just want to hit on that for a moment. You said the owner that, that has an interest in their business. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this also plays into it a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, but I've seen it enough times, Bob, and I know you have. The owner that um, feels that they're operational, but they're not really operational, mm -hmm. there's you know guys that start to take that little time off, and, and if your shop, if the attitude is to your shop isn't correct, the employees look at you as you're not interested in it. Oh. The perception that you don't care. Absolutely. Well, guess how they're going to work. Your shop is not operational. If they think you don't care, they're not going to care. No. And that's an excellent point because, once again, attitude, ethics, tone, it's all dictated from the top. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point because operational means runs well without a lot of attention on it. Well, in order to have that, that means all systems have got to be completely in place. All employees must be trained on how those systems work. And all policy needs to be known on how those systems work. So that everybody, and remember, policy is all about agreement. It's not about dictating. You're right, good policy always garners agreement within a group. So oh, yeah. if an owner's got his head really in the game, he makes sure all of these points are in place if he cares about his business. If he doesn't, he will just kind of like, oh, yeah, I got this piece in place, got that piece in place. I can go play now. Meanwhile, the policies aren't in place. The systems aren't really in place. He's got one maybe superstar on the front counter, and it all works as long as he's there, kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know what, you summed up a lot of shops. You know, I, I hope there's a lot of people listening to this that that, that hits home, um, because I just I know of of quite a few shops that that exists, in. and you know that that uh, that all star you have that's actually making it somewhat work. He ain't gonna stick around real long, or she ain't gonna stick around real long because that's it's on them. That's right. All you've done is just dump it on them, and they look at you like, look at this guy, he's out golfing. That's you right. Know, I got this mess. Well, that's you know that's he's they're not going to stick around. No, because they quickly figure out you know what I could do this on my own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to clean up a mess, it's going to be my own mess. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we're talking about here um, with with attitude is long term. You know that's not going to get your you know if you're looking for a tech today. Yes, I mean, you have to have the right attitude, but we're talking about you're building your business for as long as you want it to be. Um, you know, so that's, you know, we'll address getting a tech in uh, at another point, but this, I just wanted to point that out, that, that is, this is definitely more long-term, and, and it's going to be so much more comfortable and pleasant for everybody that comes in the shop. Absolutely. You, you got the, the boss has a better attitude. You know, so the, the first the first action point I would I would recommend to anyone who's listening to this is review your own purpose for your business. Why does this business exist in the first place? Because that's yes. what purpose is. It's the reason yeah. why. You know, we we didn't open up repair shops because our doctor said we didn't have enough stress in our life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our shop does have a purpose. It um, does. And you know, I think Steve, Steve has, has, has expanded on that purpose so in a very admirable way because he's, he's expanded it from the point of providing a quality service to the community so that the vehicles in my community are safe, reliable for my customers. He's expanded that into much more of a culture in his own shop of uh, kind of a fun place to go to. 
So customers, they feel very welcomed. And that just rubs off to the employees, to the customers, to everything. But if Steve's attitude had been, gosh, you know, I just want to get this place together just good enough so I can go do whatever I want to do, he would never get there. It wouldn't actually ever happen because it was the wrong purpose for doing it. Well, you, you know what? I, I tell you what, I'm not sure if I made a mistake or not because I had this, this uh, plan in my head to build what I have here, right? But then I built it, and I'm like so happy to be here, I don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a problem. <laughs> I built it, so I really love it. And uh, I don't know where else I'd go because anywhere I'd go, I wouldn't have as much fun. There you go. And here's the yeah. other reason why really sitting down for yourself and naming the purpose and the goal for my business, when you come up with something that really indicates to you and it's, and it's strong, it's like, wow, I like that. I like that vision. You know, it's something I talk about at the seminars, and that is if you could just close your eyes for a moment and imagine what your life would be like if every aspect of your shop was exactly the way you wanted it to be, what would that look like? Man, that's powerful stuff. But you've also named the, the really the purpose for the business. You have happy customers. You've got happy employees. you got people doing well. I, my techs are the best paid techs, the best educated techs. They really take care of my customers. My customers really enjoy coming in. I'm well known in the community as a stand-up guy. You know, really naming that out for yourself. Because when you've got it thoroughly named out, and, and I, I really mean this, and you type that up and put it in front of you, it helps you refocus when those tough days come. And we all know what those tough days are. But if you've got a real strong purpose for doing what you're doing, you can weather those tough days and keep your attitude in the right place. Mike Lee used to do years and years and years ago a uh, talk at some of the trade shows, and it was called, You Need a Checkup from the Neck Up. <laughs> 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 and it was all about that. You're not going to recruit into a place that is unhappy, where the owner really doesn't know what he wants to do with the business. You've got to be alive. You've got to be passionate about what you're doing. And I think that's just so important. You know, any um, anybody you're going to bring in for an interview or anybody you're trying to recruit will know within five minutes of them walking in the door whether they want to work for you or not. That's right. Their eyes are looking around. They're seeing how the techs are, are treating each other. They're seeing how uh, the shop is flowing. This is All this is happening before the first how you doing is said. You know, they know. They know sure they do. Doing. A professional technician, you know, and also knowing what technicians need and want, and we'll get into that more when we get into marketing your shop, but knowing what technicians need and want is so critical as a, someone who's trying to recruit them. You've got to yes. know what they need and want. Yeah, I um, survey them. Survey you want to know what they want? You want to know what they need? Survey them. They will tell you. That's right. I All survey my techs. All right, so I, 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 we're, we're going to keep these. We're trying to keep these one topic at a time, so we don't hit you over the head with too many things at one time. And this one was all about attitude and mm -hmm. making sure your attitude's in the right place, your tone is in the right place about your business. Because once again, if you're motivated, if you're inspired, if you're passionate, people will feel that, and they'll want to be part of that. High tone people want to be part of a great group. The only person, and Steve said this before, and it's absolutely true, the only people who would possibly want to work in a low-tone shop are low-tone people. <laughs> <laughs> if you run a low-tone shop, expect miserable people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, maybe that's what you're going for. I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, that's it. You know, happy birthday to you. Yeah. All right. Hey, Steve, I want to thank you so much for your time and for coming up with this great idea. Uh, we hey, sure, sure hope. Thanks, um, thanks a lot folks. for hosting us here. Oh, you're welcome. And your feedback, anybody who's listening to this, your feedback on this is is going to help us steer and develop and um, and make sure we are delivering what uh, everybody wants to hear. So I want to thank you for taking your time and listening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.